Friends, Greg and Liz here with you to start off this week, and we're going to start here. Making sure your child is up to date on all their shots, of course, is very important. But the Department of Health says the state is now seeing a significant drop in childhood vaccinations, and they believe the COVID pandemic is the reason behind that. Chris Rosado is here to explain what this all means for your family. Chris. Well, with the thought of another pandemic surfacing again in our lifetimes, health experts warn of what could happen if your children are not on top of their vaccinations. Before the pandemic came around, routine immunizations for diseases like polio, measles, and the flu were not nearly as controversial as they are these days. State Health Officer Dr. Joseph Kanner at Press Club today says annual immunizations for kids in kindergarten through sixth grade have decreased over the last two years. We still exceed national benchmarks on this, but those numbers have been slipping. Dr. Kander says even a small decrease of a couple percentage points could mean a lot more on paper and adds many folks were left in the crossfire of mixed messages around the pandemic, which would explain the decreases that we're seeing. You know, these anti-vax untruths are just out there in a way that's more prominent than it has been in years past, and there's a real movement behind that now. I think the COVID thing made people more scared of stuff, and I don't understand why, but... That's just me. I mean, I got them all. Folks we spoke with shared how they stay on top of their kids' shots. Well, we just make sure we follow whatever the uh, the doctor, the pediatrician recommended. And then as far as schools, uh, you know, schools recommend certain vaccinations and immunizations, so we just follow that. On top of the struggle to regain lost ground with public trust, the department is also facing potential budget cuts. Lawmakers voted to cut $100 million from the department, and when matched with federal dollars, is more like $800 million. The governor has since put the money back with his veto authority, but calls to reverse the governor's veto, along with a couple of others, have grown. I, I don't, I'd be shocked if that was overridden. I think most people understand that those services are important, that the compounding loss when you factor in the federal match would be devastating, particularly in a year where we have um, a budget surplus. Now, lawmakers must have their ballots turned into the legislature by Thursday, and we should know by sometime early next week if a veto special session will happen. Guys? All right, Chris Forrest tonight. Thank you for that.